This is Scott here, and I'm bringing you a video of my Hobby Lobby Telemaster Electro being flown with Mission Planner software running on Pixhawk hardware. This plane was purchased in 2009 as a FPV platform, but that never really materialized due to the radio hardware and it being 72 megahertz. Uh, the video transmitter was running on 1.3 gigahertz, and the two seemed to fight with each other a little bit. I'm sure I could have gotten it worked out if I put more effort into it, but I just didn't really have the local support and the online support at the time. Um, I had flown this plane for more uh, more for enjoyment for about two years when I was uh, addressed by a member of my club who was interested in doing aerial photography. I took interest in this and began modifying the plane to hold uh, the Pixar hardware and also set it up so it could hold a camera. Uh, to do this, I had to move the rudder elevator servos out to make room for the Pixhawk board and some of its components, and you can see that in the software. Uh, the wheels were upgraded to Kavan wheels, as I needed something larger than the foamies I had on it, uh, in case the runway area were to be ungroomed. I looked at some of the Dubro uh, large foamy wheels, but they were just super heavy, uh, and the Kavans just seem to be uh, lightweight, and they're inflatable. I don't run them with any air pressure, and on a small plane like this, that's no problem. After the build was done, I performed some testing with it and was able to fly routes well uh, and take some pretty good photos after performing some initial tuning of the software. About that time, the person who I built the plane for stopped showing up at our field. Um, I guess he got his own business going and no longer needed my support. I'm not really sure what happened to him, so I don't have any regrets about that, but uh, it just would have been nice to see this uh, plane actually do real uh, aerial photography work. It's quite capable. Uh, the plane had not been flown in about six months, so I wanted to bring it out to the field to our weekly Wednesday night fly-in. Uh, to prepare for this, I did an upgrade of Mission Planner on my laptop, as well as a firmware upgrade. Uh, and before the upgrade, I was running Airplane Firmware 3.5, 3.6, but it upgraded 3.8. Now, the upgrade is not a straight upgrade, as you might expect, and I advise you read the release notes of the 3.8 uh, upgrade. Somewhere around 3.7, the way RCN and RC out uh, for each channel totally changed. I believe they used to be combined, and they have since split them. Uh, they now operate independently, and it gives you a lot more flexibility. So when I first powered up my plane, I noticed my throttle, rudder, and elevator, they were fine. My wing was a different situation. Uh, the ailerons, basically, were completely backwards. And the software attempts to do a migration from the old configuration to the new configuration for you, but uh, the problem is, they, they, they even tell you this, they can't think of every possible wing configure out, configuration out there. Uh, so, just to let you know, I mean, I'm, I'm thrilled that I found this, the upgrade software, or the upgrade uh, documentation out there. Uh, I just happened to troll across it. Had I not found it, I probably would have gone straight flying and not known the difference. And... I would have found out that at least one of the servos was back, the ailerons were backwards, but as far as the uh, the aileron uh, correction, I would have never figured that out, uh, that that was backwards. I just would have assumed it would have poured it over until it was too late. Um, I probably could have shut off, the, pulled it back to manual mode if it was going wrong. Uh, so the thing is, I have a three output or three servo configuration for my wing. Each servo has its own, or each, wing, each aileron has its own servo. The flaps have their own servos, but they're on a Y cord, so that's effectively three servos in this configuration. Uh, when I tested the ailerons in manual mode, they were backwards. I went into Mission Planner and quickly reversed them, but uh, that fixed the output configuration in manual mode only, but they were still wrong in any kind of guided mode, such as FBWA, fly-by-wire A mode. Uh, basically, I, you could pick the plane up and roll it, and you could tell that it was correcting the opposite direction. Uh, I had to reassign the meaning of servos 5 and 8, so uh, one of them was coded as 24, the other was coded as 25, and these numbers indicate which is the left flap rod and the right flap rod, and then I had to re-reverse the ailerons, um, and then everything was responding properly. That took about 20 minutes. It should also be noted that you can expect the PID values to change as the output movement is different in the software as well. I didn't change them. I went fly and I figured I'll just pull it back uh, in the manual mode if it had a problem. It flew okay. Um, it does need a little tuning of some sort. So the pitch and the uh, the pitch pids are fine. This plane has a very long tail moment. Um, I doubt you're going to over 
hit it unless you really try hard. Um, so it, it's it's not going to be a problem with the PIDs. Uh, mostly the twitching was in the roll axis. Um, at some point I'm going to go and change the PIDs for them, but I haven't even looked at the mission planner logs yet. So next you're going to see uh, where I'm prepping for takeoff. I check the direction of the control surfaces one last time. Uh, after takeoff, I do some trim runs, uh, trim it out slightly. The plane is roughly out of trim. Uh, not much, just a little bit. Um, the plane winds up being very out of trim when I do the crow configuration. Uh, that's why I have separate servos for flaps and ailerons, and that's why I have it all hooked together. I want to be able to have that heavy brake action uh, when I'm coming in for a landing. Um, after doing that, I do some F by, or fly by wire A testing. I land. Um, and then I take off again, do some more fly-by-wire A testing, and you'll see in the testing of fly-by-wire A, and I'll document it on the screen where it starts, where it ends, that the roll axis is a little bit twitchy. Um, I suspect it's a little over uh, compensating on either the, uh, the proportion or derivative, I'm not sure. Um, we did have a five-knot breeze. And the other thing is my servos do twitch a little bit in the wing, um, and I think that's either because of the GPS or the uh, the Pixhawk transmitter uh, transmitting back to the ground station. I'm not sure. So, but I'll take a look at the logs later. So, here we go. We're going to go take off. Uh, so, hopefully, you'll find this educational and um, maybe even enjoyable. Thank you. Right, let's see what we got. Velcro down. Aileron proper. Rotor lift proper, elevator lift proper. Alright, keep it in manual mode no matter what happens to my switch here. take it up and do fly-by-wire A as soon as we get up to a cruising altitude and see what happens. 